Welcome to Motherhood. I'm Dr. Christina Hibbert, and I'm here to help you overcome, to become, and to flourish in this esteem building and sometimes esteem diminishing experience we call motherhood. And today that's what we're going to be talking about, self-esteem and self-worth, of course, and specifically how do we help our children and our girls particularly develop self-esteem. And um, I was thinking a lot about this topic and what we might be talking about today. And I was remembering a story from several years ago. I actually shared this in my book, This Is How We Grow. And it was during one of my hard times when we'd been going through all this craziness with, you know, after we'd inherited our sons and we were trying to adopt them and there was just all kinds of legal problems going on. And boy, legal problems are the worst, I think. And I was really feeling down. I was depressed. I was down on myself, I think because there was so much contention going on around us in our lives and and people trying to interfere with our adoption and saying things about us that just were unfounded and untrue, I started to take them personally, I think, and I started to kind of turn it in on myself. And I remember one night I was with my husband and I had been having a really bad day and I closed the door to our bedroom and I just poured out to him how I was feeling. And at one point I just, you know, I was kind of crying and sobbing. And I just, at one point just said, I just hate myself. I just hate myself. I just hate feeling like this. I hate being depressed. I hate that I'm so mean to myself in my head and that everything these other people say, I'm taking, you know, to my, into my own thoughts and my own feelings. And I just, I just hate this. I just hate it, you know? And it, of course, bonded us together and he was able to comfort me. But I didn't realize until the next day that my eight-year-old daughter at the time had been standing outside the door listening to our conversation. And the next day I found out because she said, mom or mommy, probably, mommy, I heard you say you hate yourself. Why do you hate yourself? And I thought, oh no, here I've done it. I had tried so hard to protect my daughters, especially, and my sons, both from hearing me ever talk negatively about myself or or say such things because I didn't want them to pick up on anything. If I was struggling, I certainly didn't want to pass it on to them. And, um, and yet here I was faced with the truth that she'd heard this. And so I explained to her, you know how sometimes you do something or you behave in a way where you feel something and you just don't like it. You don't like how you feel. You don't like what you did and you feel bad about it and you wish it could change and you wish it could be different. Well, that's what I meant. I said, I didn't, I don't hate myself, really. I just hated how I was feeling. And I hated what I'd been doing and how negative I'd been and um, some of how I was acting. You know, can you understand that? And she said, yeah, I understand. It's like, it's like when you do something wrong and you don't like what you did, but you still love yourself. And I said, yes, exactly. Hoping that it wasn't the Pandora's box being opened for my daughter to struggle with self-esteem issues because I, that's really what I thought. I thought, oh no, now she's going to struggle her whole life because she heard me say this. And I know as parents listening, as mothers, I know many of you can relate to this, that whether it's through your child hearing something you've said or done, um, or whether it's just through being a parent and raising them, we all question that. Um, How do we help our children find that self-esteem and that self-worth? And how do we um, empower them with that in their lives? And in fact, as I've been writing about and teaching about self-esteem and self-worth more and more over the years, that's the number one question I get from parents is how do I teach my kids self-esteem? And that's exactly what we're focusing on today. And we're going to um, introduce our guest in just a moment. But as always, I want to thank you for joining us here on Motherhood each week. And I hope you'll visit my website at drchristinahibbert.com for much more information on self-esteem and self-worth and all the things we'll be talking about today, as well as links to all my books, including my newest one that's out soon, Eight Keys to Mental Health Through Exercise, which has a whole chapter on exercise helping build self-esteem and self-worth. And I also hope you'll join us on Facebook and our Facebook group, which is Growing Through Motherhood. So if you haven't already, search it, ask to be added to Growing Through Motherhood, and we'd love to have you. And join me on Instagram and on all the other social media channels, including YouTube, where you can find a video for today's episode if you prefer to watch it in video. 
All right, so now I wanna just do my Dr. Christie's Simple Solutions segment. And this is the time where I get to share the products, ideas, programs that I think are wonderful that can help make your lives simpler, more meaningful, richer as moms. And today I am really thrilled to share with you a program that I came across through Facebook. I actually just saw a Facebook ad and I thought I've gotta have them on the show. So today I have with me Scott Walker from Teen Safe. Scott, welcome to Motherhood. Thank you very much for having me. I'm uh, happy to be here. It's a pleasure to have you and, and to get to learn more about Teen Safe. So I guess I'll just jump right in and let you tell our listeners a little bit about what Teen Safe is and what it can do for them. Okay. The, uh, the simplest answer for what Teen Safe is is it's a software that allows parents to get a glimpse of the digital lives of their teenagers. Um, to be a little more specific, we allow parents by, uh, by going to teensafe.com to install our software, and then it can, it can tell parents information like what text messages are being deleted by your kids. You can actually read the deleted text messages, oh. all their text messages, kick messenger chat sessions, and basically you can get information about what's happening in your child's digital life. Wow. And as a mom with five teenagers, <laughs> I think this is amazing. <laughs> amazing. Tell us it's, a little uh, bit about it, how it started. Yeah. Well, sure. Um, I'm the father of uh, two daughters who uh, were teenagers. Uh, they're a little bit older now. But uh, as, as anybody that's, uh, that's gone through parenting of teenagers in today's age, you, you know, I'm sure we all understand that there are occasionally challenges. And to make a long story really short, um, my youngest daughter was, uh, was going into a new school and going into this school, we, my wife and I, we could sense that something was wrong, and we learned that she was being bullied. We actually, um, we actually found out from she. She never told us anything, but we found out by by seeing some of these uh, messages uh, on TeenSafe mm. that there was a problem at the school. We were able to intervene. Um, we actually, in our particular case, we changed schools. She had a wonderful high school experience, and uh, and it really made a difference in our lives. And uh, and so, from that standpoint, Teen Safe allows parents to check in on their kids digitally. And you know, m for most parents, nothing's ever wrong. You could you know try it out, use it once or twice, make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And for other parents, you know they. There's, there's a possibility that their kids need help. And, uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of situations that our teens get themselves into, um, mm -hmm. and they don't always know how to best handle it, and we provide a, a solution to allow parents to help. Amazing. So you say it's software. So what is it? what kind of system does a person need to use TeenSafe? Well, there's a couple different types of cell phones out there. Christy, um, mm -hmm. there's an Android and an iPhone. Those right. are the two types of services that, uh, that TeenSafe works with. Mm -hmm. And either way, it's definitely, it's, it's a different experience. It's a different product. Mm -hmm. But if you just go to TeenSafe.com, um, there's, there's an easy way to read through it and understand it. We allow everybody to get a free trial and, uh, you know, see how it works and make sure that it, you know, it works for them yeah. and then decide whether or not they want to use it. Oh, that's amazing. So you guys offer a free trial at teensafe.com. Absolutely. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So everybody listening, you can go try it out for free and see maybe what it can do for you. But I, I appreciate you sharing that story, Scott, because actually today's episode is about self-esteem and girls <laughs> and, you know, okay. some, of the, some of the rough times that girls go through. So this is kind of a, a really great idea to be able to give empower parents, I guess, to see what's really going on in their daughters yeah. and children's lives. The word, the word I like to use is it really provides, let's call them teachable moments yeah. in, a, in a parent and teenager's you know, life experience. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, you know, today especially, teens get involved in communication and it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the parent being able to, to understand what they're going through and, and it opens up lines of communication. I love that. 
So let's, um, again, teensafe.com. And I want to encourage everybody to go there, try the free trial, check it out. Yes. I'll see what it can do for you. And also, you said there's a lot more information on the website as well. Absolutely. There's just tons of uh, free content for parents. Um, we have a, a blog, a Facebook page, a Twitter, um, even a YouTube channel with lots and lots of videos, more information. Uh, there's, there's just tons of great free content uh, that Teen Safe provides. I love that. So it's not just the actual program that they can get, but also learn more about how to protect our kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Scott Walker, for being here to represent Teen Safe. And again, I hope everybody will go and check it out. Thank you so much, Dr. Christie. appreciate you having me on. My pleasure. Now, doesn't that sound like an incredible system, everybody? Teensafe.com. I hope you'll all go check it out. And especially as we're talking today about self-esteem and girls, it's a great way for us to keep in touch with what's really going on in our daughters' and our sons' digital lives. Now on to the rest of the show. I am really excited about our guest today because this is one of those instances that seem to be happening more and more where a friend of mine says, hey, I know this person or I have this friend who's really incredible and amazing and I think you two should know each other. And let me just say for everybody listening, if you have an amazing friend and you think that I should know that person, then please, by all means, introduce me because I'm loving meeting all these incredible people. And so when I met this particular person, I was truly impressed with all that she has been doing to try to empower girls with self-esteem and help them to feel that self-worth that we're going to be talking about today. So Tennille, Shanae, welcome to our show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you. And, you know, for those who aren't watching the video, you can see, those who are watching a video can see that Tennille's young and you don't have children of your own yet, right? No. Right? Okay. But so you may be wondering, how is she going to teach us about helping our kids to develop self-esteem? Well, let me tell you a little bit about Tennille and all she's been up to. She is a self-esteem advocate and she's a public speaker and a coach. And when she graduated from Biola University, she got a degree in communications with an emphasis in public relations, and she went to work as a PR professional. Then she decided she wanted to change her career and pursue her passion for speaking. And specifically, she wanted to help girls learn how to feel that self-worth and have self-esteem. So she now works as a speaker. She does workshops for girls in kindergarten through grade 12 about self-worth. And she speaks truth, capital T-R-U-T-H, into helping them to speak truth into each other's lives. And we're going to talk to her more about her program and what she does. Her program is called True Reflections. And um, you can find out more at her website, which is Tenille, T-E-N-I-E-L-L-E, Shanae, S-H-E-N-A-E dot com. Correct? Correct. Okay, good. <laughs> Wonderful. A crazy name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have to spell it all, you know, Tenille, Shanae. <laughs> it's beautiful. But we're so glad. I'm so glad to have you. And let's just jump right in. And what have you seen? So you've been working with girls you know, so far um, in all these, you know, all different age ranges, it sounds like. And what have you seen so far are some of the biggest challenges when it comes to girls and their self-esteem? Honestly, one of the biggest challenges is each other. Yeah. We just don't have a sense of, well, first of all, we don't know how to accept a compliment or encourage each other. Mm -hmm. There's so much brokenness. And so girls are just tearing each other down and we're believing these lies and labels that people are putting on us and it's just trickle effect yeah. whereas so is encouragement and so if it, we can just teach these girls the importance of encouragement and that we're in this together we're fighting this battle together kind of creating a unity between them then I think that a lot of change can be made I love that I love how you said that there's this trickle effect of the negativity and the criticisms, but there's also can be a trickle effect of that encouragement. And that's Absolutely. really what you focus on in your work, correct? Yes. Trying yes. to help girls not just encourage the one girl, but then for that girl to encourage the others and vice versa. Exactly. To help each other. Okay, so so I'm with you there. I think that uh, mean girls, I mean, it's a thing. It's a real <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> it is. And sometimes it's not even that they're trying to be mean, but they just don't know 
yet how to, you know, be socially um, kind and um, compassionate. Yes, they, well, I think a lot of it stems from comparing. Yeah. And so we see another girl and how beautiful she is without knowing that she's also struggling with how she feels about herself. Or we see girls doing, uh, going on these extravagant trips or excelling at sports or in school, and we want that. Yeah. So the only way to show that is by tearing them down so that we feel more important than them. Right. And it's not doing any good for anyone. I totally agree. And I have to say that, unfortunately, though it, though it definitely starts when we're young, doesn't necessarily end there, does it? I mean, always. No. It can grow with us into adulthood if we aren't careful. Yes. I think as moms, especially, I think all you listeners can relate to this, we definitely tend to compare too. <laughs> and, um, you know, again, we're going to kind of go back and forth between talking about how we can empower and teach our children, our girls self-esteem and how we as moms are definitely the models for self-esteem as well as my story kind of illustrated. Um, so if we're not careful and we're not, if we're comparing, then our kids can pick it up that way too. Absolutely. That was yeah. one of the hu hugest things for how where I got my confidence was just watching my mom. Mm -hmm. And growing up, she was always uh, she she didn't wear makeup, and she always spoke good words about herself. Mm -hmm. She would eat dessert, <laughs> but then still exercise. You yes, know? I didn't love hear that. a lot of the diet talk, and that really helped influence how I viewed the importance of health, but not stressing are always having that consume you, your diet and exercising. And yeah. it was, it's really powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. I've heard so many friends, I think more, more so even as an adult, um, with adult friends, women who talk a lot about how fat they are, or they can't, they don't look good, or I look terrible, or they do, they belittle themselves. And you're right, that example that you had of your mother, being able to talk kindly about herself and, and be confident and be who she was. I mean, you can't um, read that in a book. That's something that you were able to gain by watching her as you grew up. Yes. And we can and all do the so same. And it's so common for women. Last summer, I went on a road trip across America, and oh. we were asking people in each state what their dreams were. Hmm. And I would say that one of the most common dreams for women was to lose 10 pounds. Oh gosh. <laughs> and, yeah, you dream for your life. You know, it's it's something that we all struggle with. We've mm. been these expectations have been put on women and it's just it's stressing everyone mm. out. And so uh, even as a big sister, I have three younger sisters, everything I do and say, they're watching me. Yeah. And so it really is an important thing. Right, absolutely. So what I'm going to do right now, and this is a little bit different for our show listeners, um, I am going to, to let you listen in on a couple of conversations I had with my daughter, Kennedy, who is 12 years old, soon to be 13, but resisting being a teenager, which I am totally okay with. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's going to happen anyway. And then my niece, Presley Elmer, who is 14, soon to be 15. And I just wanted, I just sat down with them the other day while we were on vacation and just asked them a little bit about what they thought about self-esteem and girls at their age. And it kind of goes with what you're already saying here, Tanil, but um, let's listen to what they have to say. And then maybe we can pick it back up and talk more about, first of all, what self-esteem and self-worth means and what we can do as parents to, to try to help our girls. And let me just say really quick that we are focusing today on girls and self-esteem. But I hope that everybody out there, whether you're a mom of boys or girls and boys or girls only, that you'll still be listening because a lot of what, most of what we talk about can be attributed to boys as well. Now, as you and many of you know, I have four sons and two daughters, and I can tell you that yes, sometimes with the sons, I have had to approach it from another angle. They are maybe more overconfident when they shouldn't be. <laughs> You know, kind of like um, it's the, op you know, overconfidence and underconfidence are the same spectrum, just opposite ends, right? So Absolutely. it's still their self-esteem problem coming out in the sense that they're not comfortable enough to just be themselves. They have to tell everybody how great they are. So I've had to approach it from that way with the boys. But, you know, a couple of my sons have also been more like some of my daughters where they do feel more deeply and kind of have more of that um you know, self-negativity that can come in in our girls so young. So 
I just want to make that known that we will do another episode on boys and self-esteem specifically to challenge all that macho stuff. But today, hopefully you can apply everything we talk about for girls to your boys as well. Okay, so let's listen first to Kennedy and then we'll hear Presley and then we'll be back right here with Tanielle to talk about it. So right now I'm talking with my daughter, Kennedy. Kennedy, welcome to motherhood. Thank you. <laughs> now, Kennedy, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us how old you are, what you like to do, that kind of thing. Um, I'm 12 years old and I love dolphins, orcas, and SeaWorld. <laughs> Yes, and she is means it when she says she loves it. She studies it all the time. She yeah, dreams about it all the time. She draws about it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, first of all, Kennedy, what would you have to say when I ask you, what are some of the biggest challenges you see in kids your age, or especially girls your age, when it comes to self-esteem, feeling confident, feeling good about yourself, that kind of thing? Well, there are always sort of kind of groups, and people like to stay in those kinds of groups. So there's sometimes popular groups and then less popular groups. Mm -hmm. Now, the popular groups, I would say, bully the non-popular groups, Mm -hmm. not actual bullying, Mm -hmm. but they just kind of make them feel insecure. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see, like, a bunch of girls, and you might not even see it, but you can just definitely tell that their their self-esteem has uh, dropped. So tell me about you personally. How has that affected you personally? Um, I I have struggled with self self esteem, and yeah, I just I just don't feel like the best person after like I have an argument with one of my friends. Mm-hmm. Because because they make you feel what? Because they they make me feel like I'm like they're superior to me somehow. Oh. So do they say things that make you feel that way, or is that something that you think that you just kind of somehow believe in yourself, or both, or Well, what? sometimes it's just believing, like, okay, well, they do this, I don't do that, or I do things differently than they do, and they're the popular group, so I must be doing something wrong. Um, but sometimes they can uh, kind of act a little bit more like, I don't know what the word is, I want to say mature, but... Mature isn't really the word, like... like teenagerish kind of? Yeah, teenagerish. <laughs> yeah. And you don't feel like you fit in that category? No. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. So, so you have struggled... You, you just said you have struggled with self-esteem. So what does that mean to you, to struggle with self-esteem? Um, to me, it means that you're not very confident in yourself and that you feel like you're any less important than someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what have you done to try to overcome those feelings when you feel like you're not as important or as good as somebody else? Um, a lot of the time I just go back to what I like to do. As I said, I really love dolphins. And so maybe I'll just go look up like a dolphin video and watch that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Or like if you're really into like sports, go outside and like play a little game of your favorite sport or something. Just do something to take your mind off it and Mm -hmm. ask for uh, help from your parents or something. But Mm -hmm. you just, you need support. You can't, you can't face this on your own. You definitely need help from other people. Mm -hmm. Um... What about other friends? Have you been able to reach out to other friends and kind of help each other when you feel yes. like that? Yes. Yeah. My, my best friend does not actually go to school, so she doesn't um, well, she's know. she's Yeah. <laughs> she's, my best friend is actually homeschooled, so she doesn't quite understand uh, my troubles with friends as much as uh, I might. And so, but she is my best friend and she will listen to me and help me. And just being around my best friend helps me just to feel better about myself because they're always there for you and they'll always make sure that you stay um, confident in yourself. Because well, she accepts you as you are, right? Yeah. You don't feel like you have to pretend or Mm-mm. be something else. And that's why she's my friend. Because, But with yeah. other friends, sometimes you might feel that way. Mm-hmm. You feel like you ever have to change to be someone's friend or to fit in yes Mm -hmm. like I'm not a very like I don't have a phone because I choose not to Mm -hmm. and like four out of my five friends Mm -hmm. uh, they all have phones and are really really uh, interested in them Mm -hmm. and I feel like I need to have a phone to be able to um like reach out to them like as if the only way that I'm going to be able to talk to them is through text yeah yeah 
Yeah. So, so, um, phones and social media, how does that play a role with you in junior high? Um, well, things are easier texted than said in person, Mm -hmm. uh, because you can just type a couple letters and send it. Um, and so people, they will just tell you what, what is on their mind. They are not afraid to tell you what they think. And that can really affect me. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. (laughs) So you mentioned that, um, that you think it's important to talk with your parents about things. So I know we've talked about those things a lot. What would, what kind of advice would you give to moms who are listening to this show that want to help their daughters to feel better about themselves and to have that self-worth and to know who they really are and to love themselves and to feel confident? Um, make sure that, make sure that your kid has good friends that actually do care because, you know, sometimes like they don't really tell you about their friends. Um, and so just like make sure that they're, they seem okay Mm -hmm. with like who they're hanging out with. Mm -hmm. Um, so that when things do happen, then as I said, you just turn to somebody, um, for help. Mm -hmm. What else can moms do? Um, I don't know. (laughs) Well, you said talk to your parents. So in what ways has that been helpful for you? Um, Well, I know that pretty much everybody deals with this kind of thing, so talking with somebody who's already gone through this, Mm -hmm. they can really give you some good advice. Mm -hmm. And what has been some of the good advice that you've received? Uh... What's some of the good advice that you've received when it comes to feeling more confident or knowing who you are? What are some of the things that you've learned that have helped you? Um, I know this sounds really cheesy, but just be yourself Mm -hmm. that's the only way that you're going to get true friends Mm -hmm. you can't act like somebody you're not and then hang out with somebody that you don't that you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) but like I some people think it's weird that I like dolphins but I have actually grown really close with one of my friends who loves dolphins and she's the only one of my friends that actually likes them Mm -hmm. and so just by being myself I've uh, gotten the greatest friendship that I could ever ask for Good advice. So be yourself, and that goes for moms and daughters, I would say. Be yourself, and don't be afraid to, you know, do what you do and love what you do and share it with everybody and not have to hide yourself, right? Yeah. Anything else you want to add on how to help girls feel good about themselves? No? (laughs) Okay. All right. And I just want to say that Kennedy is also on YouTube, and you can find her channels at, what are they? Ken and Coco, K-E-N-N, space, and sign, C-O-C-O. And, and that is your stop American motion. Girl stop motion videos, which are adorable. You got to check those out. And my Orca editing videos, which, which are at? Which is at All Things Quirky. All Things Quirky. Okay, on YouTube. And you can also find her at Dolphin Central on Instagram. <laughs> if your kids happen to love dolphins, they should be following her. And if they happen to love American Girl dolls, and if you just want to see some awesome videos that are stop motion, you got to check her out. I know I'm her mom, so, you know, got to promote you, huh? <laughs> You're pretty good at it. I don't know what's all I can say. All right. Thanks, Ken. Mm-hmm. All right. So with me right now, I have my niece, Presley Elmer. Presley, welcome to motherhood. Thank you. (laughs) It's great to have you. So I want to talk to you a little bit about girls and self-esteem from your perspective. Now, first of all, tell everybody how old you are and um, what do you like to do? (laughs) Um, I'm 14. I'm a freshman in high school. Um, I like to perform. I like to write. I, I mean, I'm an average teenager. Spend a lot of time on my phone and... Hang out with my family and stuff like that. The huge. Okay, good. <laughs> Perfect. So what have you seen um, for girls, not yourself, but also maybe your friends? Like what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've seen for girls feeling good about themselves or feeling confident or what kind of challenges have you seen? Um, I think the biggest issue, at least with what I've seen, is that they compare themselves to other people so often it's with our generation we are always on our phones and we're always on social media we're seeing different things and we see oh why can't my hair be that thick or why can't it be that thin why can't it be that color why can't I have a skinnier waist just simple stuff like that and then especially in performing it's 
like why can't I be that loud when I'm singing why can't I act that well why can't I get that well in the character so usually it's just stuff like that yeah and so have you or your friends um do you feel like had struggles with trying to feel confident have you felt that either personally or seen that with your friends um I felt that every time I get on social media I'll see oh well she's gorgeous that's great as I sit here in my sweatpants haven't even got out of bed yet it's great it's just what I needed when I woke up this morning and then my friends it's always like there's something wrong there's always something that's wrong Mm -hmm. and something that's hard is when you're trying to be confident with yourself it seemed as being like arrogant and cocky so it's hard to be self-confident without seeming seeming to be cocky right so so finding that balance between being confident but not having people think that you love yourself so much it's so great yeah and you brought up a couple of things. So first of all, you brought up comparing to other people. And then you brought up social media, which I think is probably huge for, especially for your generation, because we didn't have that problem when we were young. You know, I didn't have social media to have to worry about. But that's a huge one when it comes to <laughs> probably comparing, too. I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? They do. Um, and something that I found out recently is that it's not just the youth that are having these problems like Mm -hmm. my mom has told me that she's seen stuff on social media some of her friends have seen why can't I be that good of a mom why can't I take my kids on trips like that Mm -hmm. and something that my mom did that I probably should do is she took a month where she just didn't go on social any social media she logged out she deleted the apps from her phone she didn't try to get on it and it builds a sort of level of self-esteem within yourself to say well, I'm a good person, I'm a good sister, I'm a good daughter, I'm a good friend. Mm -hmm. And so I think once you've built yourself up to a certain level, then you can start looking at the other people around you. Very wise. I love that advice. And that's a great idea, right? To sometimes take a break from social media so that we can remember who we really are without all of that comparison, right? So um, have you ever experienced anything like bullying through either through social media or in other ways? I have. <laughs> what was that like and how did that impact, you know, how you were able to um, feel about yourself or your friends or whatever? Um, I, it was, I think maybe two years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in the summer and I got on and I saw that there was this whole hate page about me and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, man. And I was really confused. Like, what have I ever done to actually make someone this mad at me? Mm-hmm. And I was going through, and no one had seen it. No one commented or liked it or anything. So, I mean, it's good to a point. Yeah. And I remember I got on, and I was like, all right, so I have two ways that I can go with this. I can either get butt hurt about it mm-hmm. and refuse to go outside and fall into some sort of depression or something like that, saying no one likes me, or I could make a joke out of it. Yeah. And being me, I made a joke out of it. Someone, they used bad grammar, so I corrected them and... (laughs) 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 You know. And and then I went back. I told my parents. Yeah. And I went back. The page had been deleted. Then, like, it was only up for, like, three hours. So Mm -hmm. they had a real strong will. (laughs) (laughs) And then I come back and... I see all this, these things that people were saying about me and I hadn't talked to some of these people in years and they were just so quick to defend me. There was like 60, 70 comments on there and of just, nah, no, that's not true. And wow. it's interesting to me to see how quick we are to help other people and how easy we are to be critiquing of ourselves. Ah, that's so true. Yeah. You're so wise. And that's one reason why I wanted to talk to you because... I feel like you have done a pretty good job of feeling confident and knowing who you are and not getting too caught up in like these things that happen, you know, because they do. They happen to you. They happen to everybody else. I'm sure anybody listening um, either has happened to them or to their their daughter. You know, a lot of people are listening that are moms. Um, And so what do you think? Why do you think you've been able to sort of be more confident and and overcome these things. I mean, I know you have that kind of personality for one, (laughs) but have you consciously made an effort to try to, you know, build your confidence and your self-esteem? Um, a couple years ago I got into Broadway and that's sort of a tragedy in itself because (laughs) you have all these people who are so good at what they do. They're such good actresses. They're such good singers. (laughs) And 
I was like, I want to be on Broadway someday. And that's been a conscious goal. And someone is on Broadway and she's my idol. Her name is Sierra Bogus. And she has this quote that I just sort of live by at this point. It's written on every surface of my room. And it's just a reminder. And it's the quote is, you are enough. You are so enough. It's unbelievable how enough you are. And I think that that when I realized to myself, I'm not a model. I'm not some sort of otherworldly something that you put on a poster to degrade people but I'm a person and I have my flaws I have my talents I have my conscious abilities and once I realized there are a lot of more good attributes to me than there are bad and if I just take a second and of course I have to acknowledge those bad things like I can be short-tempered I can be cocky and arrogant but I can be kind Mm -hmm. and I can do the things that I can be a good person rather than oh, well, did you hear what I said about that person? That was terrible. Yeah. And stuff like that. So you actively seek to see the good and acknowledge the good in yourself. Yeah. And emphasize that for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, And it's surprising to me how many people don't do that. Yeah. It's like they go in their room and they look in their mirror and they're like, ugh, would you, my hair is disgusting. It's so wavy and greasy. And I'm like, well, I mean, I just got out of bed, so... You got to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Right, right. <laughs> I think that's great. And so do you help, how do you um, help your friends with that? Do you do, try to do the same thing? Like you said, being kind and yeah, that goes a long way, right? It does. When I think that something, when you're kind and you strive to make it so that you yourself are a good person and you be kind, you start to see, you see so much I don't know the word. There's so much goodness in other people. There's so many Mm. qualities that they just seem to overlook. Like my 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 best friend of all time. She's so funny, Mm. and she's so kind, and she's so helpful to everyone. And I acknowledge that. I was like, "Do you ever realize that you're really like a nice person?" (laughs) She looks at me like I was crazy. (laughs) I was like, "Do you not get told that?" And then I realized. Well, I'm a pretty stinking good person too. <laughs> and if, I love it. When you're kind to other people, you really do start to notice the different qualities that they have and then you notice the qualities that you have. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. So what would you, if there was one thing you wanted moms to know about how to help their daughters to feel good about themselves, to have confidence, you know, all the things we're talking about, what do you think, what's your advice for moms? Um... I think that you need to teach your daughters how to accept compliments. It's big because for the first few years of my life, someone would say, oh, you're such a good writer because I have my own stuff that I write. And then you're such a good writer. No, no, no. (laughs) But we all do that. That's for sure. (laughs) Once I learned how to accept compliments and how to say, all right, so I am, I mean, I, I mean, obviously I think I'm okay or else I wouldn't, write. Yeah. But if someone compliments you on your looks or your outfit, you just say, thank you. You just <laughs> accept that. Yeah. And you feel a lot better. <laughs> just say, thank you. That is thank the best you. advice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I mean, something that my mom's done that's helped me is she also tells me some of the things that I'm doing wrong. Yeah. And that sounds scary to be, tell your daughter, you know, you're, you're being a little bit selfish. You're being a little bit rude. If you acknowledge that and you make it a point that you are willing to change yourself and you're willing to help your daughter change, it really does help a lot. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And just keep the relationship strengthened between you and your kids, because I know I wouldn't be anywhere without my mom. (laughs) And they, and your, and your mom is an example to you because she's worked, you know, she's confident and she's worked on herself too. Yeah. Yeah. And in in the book that she wrote, This is How We Grow, she said uh <laughs> I'm I just finished rereading it. So she said, <laughs> fake it till you make it. Yeah. But you mun you you can't fake who you are. You can fake a look, you can fake a smile, you can fake whatever, you just can't fake yourself. So I think that confidence is one of those things that you just you fake it for a really long time and then you look back and oh well I am a confident person. Right. I mean that's how I got mine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because, right, sometimes it doesn't, it might not come naturally, you might not feel it, but you you do, you kind of put it on like you're trying on an outfit and like, okay, I think I can pull this off and I'm going to try it. 
And then over time, you do it that enough and you start to get used to it like a habit. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. And way to quote the book. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Anything else you want to add, Presley? I just want to reinstate my quote that I write on everything. The you are enough, you are so enough. It's unbelievable how enough you are. Yeah. And um, this this girl, her name is Sierra Bogus. I'm sure I mentioned that earlier, but um, she was talking and she said another quote by Wayne Dyer. Who's amazing. Yes. He said, what other people think of me is none of my business. Oh, I love that. I haven't heard that. It's great. Wow. So Wisdom from Presley Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and talking to me. I think you're great. Well, thanks. <laughs> okay, so again, that was Kennedy, age 12, and Presley, age 14, Tanielle, what do you think about hearing what Kennedy and Presley have to say? Does it sound pretty familiar? Absolutely. I hear this all the time <laughs> with my girls in the workshops and especially social media. Yeah. That has changed everything about self-esteem and self-worth. And I I I honestly love social media. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of pros from it. I keep in contact with friends overseas and uh, I really do I don't want to tear down social media, but there are things within ourselves that we have to recognize before using it. Yeah. And there is a sense of false life within it. Mm -hmm. You only see the highlights of people's lives on social media. And uh, there is that comparison factor that we were talking about earlier where, wow, she's doing that. Why do I not do that? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, she has that boyfriend and what do I have? Mm -hmm. And really, we're comparing each other, and it's like comparing a pie and apples. You know, <laughs> like they're they're just not comparable as people. We're each unique, and we just need the apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We need the apple pie. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Because we are unique, and we need to be able to celebrate and identify those uniquenesses about us, and um, and not to bring ourselves down with them or others down. And so you mentioned social media and we've heard, you know, earlier we were talking about, um, you know, just the comparing and, and Presley just mentioned that and Kennedy was talking about friends and that's obviously an issue. And then also there's these labels versus or labels and lies, I guess I would say, versus what's the truth. So talk a little bit about what you've seen as far as labels and lies and self-esteem. Yeah, we do an activity in one of my workshops where all the girls write down anything that they've been labeled and everyone puts that label on their back and we just walk around looking at those labels mm -hmm. and the words that people have put and they're just hurtful things mm -hmm. and they're really really they're lies and mm -hmm. so what we focus on is speaking truth into each other's lives and instead of believing those lies and those labels that have been put on us because we are not the labels. We're much deeper than that. What I try and get the girls to know is that they are loved and they are worthy and they are known. Mm. And that is what defines us. Those three words define us, not the labels that other people have put on us. Or even what we do or what we accomplish, that's not who we are. It yeah. makes up who we are, but it does not define us. Right. I so agree with you on that. And so I want to ask you, what? how do you define self-esteem and how do you differentiate self-esteem and self-worth? Because I know how I do, but you have your own thoughts. I want to hear. Yeah, absolutely. So I do think there's a difference. And I've really focused a lot more on self-worth. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say self-esteem is your confidence in your abilities. Mm -hmm. So what you do and how you look, those kind of things are self-esteem, how you view yourself in that way. Whereas self-worth is your sense of value, of your mm -hmm. own value in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love focusing on self-worth because I think that's more the root of the issue and other things stem off of that. You can have a high self-esteem and a low self-worth. Yeah. And I think that having that good sense of who you are as uh, your value mm -hmm. is really important because then you'll be able to see your beauty and what you're good at and how important you are to other people. I love how you define that. I swear I've written two books where I've talked about self-esteem versus self-worth and I think you've put it better than I have. So <laughs> <laughs> I might have to borrow that. I love that. But and I agree. I completely agree that there is a difference between self-esteem and self-worth. 
And one other differentiation I like to make is that self-worth is knowing who we really are and self-esteem is sort of the outward appearance of who we really are. Or yeah. it can't even include how others think or feel about who we really are. So that's why it's it's tricky with self-esteem. If you're only seeking self-esteem and not seeking to develop that self-worth, that self-esteem can change. Your opinion of yourself can change. Your talents can change. Your looks can change. Other people's opinions about you can change. And that's why, to me, it's scary when so much of the work on self-worth focus or self-esteem focuses only on building self-esteem and feeling mm -hmm. good about yourself. But it's, it's hard to feel good about yourself if you don't know who you really are, right? Yes. Yes, that's actually one of the activities that I do in my workshops. We uh, build a pyramid. And on the outside of the pyramid is that you are loved, worthy, and known. And that's your self-worth. And uh, those things are things that don't change. Whereas the things inside the pyramid, they make up who you are, but they don't define you like what I was saying earlier. And those are things like your role models, what you do, your character, personality, different things like that. But they are changing like you were saying. And that's why it's mm -hmm. so important to not base who you are on the things that you do because the things you do now might be different in 15 years and that's just going to get confusing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Absolutely. I love I love this. And I want to just kind of um, emphasize for our listeners that these exercises you keep bringing up and I hope you'll keep bringing up more. These are things that we can do with our own children or with our, with our daughters as well. I mean, we could have them write the labels that people put and put them on their back and we could do the same. We could do it with our whole family. Um, so I love that you're sharing what you do. And, and I just think it's so brilliant that you came up with this whole workshop. It's just wonderful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, you're welcome. And so, okay, so if we know what self-esteem and self-worth is and we're trying to build self-worth, which again, you defined as our value, we're trying to help us feel loved. Did you say loved, valued? Loved, worthy, and known. Worthy and known. Okay, good. So let's think about that for a minute. So loved, worthy, and known, right? So as yes. moms, this is really good stuff for us because these are three things that we can really focus on trying to teach our daughters, right? Yes, and bring out in your daughters. <laughs> and bring out in them so that they can become the same and they feel loved, worthy, and known, and they can do the same with others. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where it starts is in the family. Mm -hmm. If they know that they're loved in their family, if they feel known that they're just they're not just known for what they've done or what people say about them, but for who they truly are, that's going to really help build up how worthy they feel yeah. within their family and then it'll stem into their school. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So let's focus on those three things. And as we do that, you know, we've been talking, we've kind of touched on it and Presley even touched on it how moms can either negatively or positively impact our daughter's self-esteem and self-worth, right? Yes. So I shared my story. And like I said, I've been really trying to be consciously, uh, my, my whole life I've tried to consciously not dump any of my stuff onto my girls, especially, well, my all my kids. I, I'm, we're talking about girls, but all my kids, because I didn't want them to have to carry that. And it's not like I've always had self-worth issues, but I have had my times where it's been, you know, it's up and down. Um, and yet it still might be bound to happen sometimes. But we, I think most importantly, need to be open to looking at ourselves and seeing what we're really doing when it comes to our own self-worth and self-esteem. Would you yes. agree? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'm not a mom. As a big sister. Yes, same, same, same I, type of thing. <laughs> I like to ask myself, would the words that I speak to myself, would I say those to my little sisters or would I say those to the girls that I speak to in my workshop? And how you're treating yourself, you know, you want to treat others even, you know, better. Yes. So that your daughters are going to pick up on it. They're going to see how you view yourself. They're going to hear what you're saying. They're going to sense how you feel about yourself. And it's going to trickle down onto them and how they see themselves. Because everything they know about who they are is they're learning from you. Yeah, absolutely. It's so true. And I think that the more aware we become of what we're doing and how we're talking about ourselves and how we're feeling, and the more we work on ourselves, it also models for them that, you know what, it's kind of, I mean, it's sad to say, but it is normal to struggle with self-esteem. I mean, really, yeah. I think... Everybody struggles with it in some way or another at some point or another. And um, hopefully it's not a lifelong struggle or battle. 
but it models for them that, you know what, I have my issues and it's okay, I'm working on them. And so we can also show them. So it's, I don't want anybody out there thinking, okay, I have to pretend I'm perfect. Cause here I am talking about like trying to shut the door so my daughter doesn't hear me talking negatively about myself. Well, you know, we don't have to pretend we're perfect. We just have to be real with ourselves and then keep that conversation open as we model what we're doing and showing them that they can also work on and build self-worth too. Yeah, I don't want any moms to feel bad because they don't know who they are. They have talked bad about themselves in the past because then you're just feeling bad about yourself and not lifting yourself up, which is exactly what we're talking about, really. So if you recognize that you need to work on that and your daughter sees you working on those things, you're teaching her how to work through those things and you can be that positive influence by showing her that. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, you know, I just want to share a couple of things that I have learned because, you know, I used to always wonder, how do you help someone build self-worth? And I want to hear your ideas. We're going to spend most of the rest of, sh- of the show hearing some of T- Tenille's ideas and strategies that she's been doing with girls and that we can apply as moms. But as we're talking about um, growing in self-worth ourselves, I want to share my pyramid of self-worth, which you know, over the years as I've I've been working as a psychologist trying to help people develop that self-worth, I really had to come up with my approach. How am I going to help them do that in a way where they really get it? Because a lot of times I'd be telling them, but you're worthy and you're this and you're that. And they're saying, oh, I know, I hear I hear you. And I think that's probably maybe true, but I don't really feel it. I don't really get it down here. Right. So that's a it's a difference. Right. So the three things that I encourage all of us moms to work on, and we can also apply them to our daughters, Um, are first self-awareness and we were just talking about that being aware of who we are the good the bad the ugly and the exceptional because I don't know what you think but I Presley actually just said it sometimes it's harder for us to accept the great things about ourselves isn't it yes yeah and Presley was just talking about that that you know you want to be confident but you don't want to be too confident because you want people to think you're cocky and you know right so um there is a line (laughs) there is a line and we we don't want to past that line. So we need to see all parts of ourselves and say, you know what, these are my strengths and I'm good at this and and I embrace those and then also work on our weaknesses and okay, I probably shouldn't gossip or I shouldn't talk about that person. I shouldn't do this. You know, I'm going to work on those things and improve if I want to. Um, and so that's self-awareness. And then the second part is self-acceptance. You know, we have to accept ourselves, which I'm sure is a lot of what you work on with the girls, because I think that not only young girls and teenage girls, but girls of all ages and women of all ages, this is where we struggle the most. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I I have found that um, this is where I spend the most time in therapy with women, (laughs) is just helping them understand how to accept themselves and accept all parts of themselves and to see that we all have our strengths and weaknesses and it's okay. Um, And as we accept them, it's not saying I like this or I want to keep doing this. It's saying this is how it is. And you know what? Either I'm going to just let it go because it's not worth my time to change this or I can change this if I want. You know, it gives us that power in our lives to kind of become who we want to be. And yeah, then, and to, yeah, go ahead. to recognize it's okay yes. to, to not be good at everything. You can't be good at everything. You can't. And and, yeah. When we recognize where we need to grow, that's when we can grow. Oh, I, I yes, yes, yes. And, to that. <laughs> and then the final step is self-love that I teach in my little pyramid. And to me, that, that incorporates four things. So the first thing is self-kindness. So like you just said, Tanil, you said, you know, ask yourself, would I talk – to, you know, to somebody else, like I'm talking to myself, you kind of ask yourself, what would I do to be kind to somebody else? Would I help them get a break? Would I help them, you know, um, do something that they've really been wanting to do? Would I, you know, do something kind for them, bring them a gift? And why don't we do that for ourselves? You know, so self-kindness. And then two is self-compassion, which goes along with what you were saying, which is kind of thinking kindly about ourselves and putting those positive thoughts into our minds instead of getting stuck on the negative and, um, and letting ourselves be compassionate when we make mistakes. And then letting other people love us, which is really important too, because a lot of times we might push love away or some, like you said, we're terrible at compliments. I think all women are, girls are. We need to learn to just say thank you. And I always tell thank my friends you. that. <laughs> Would you agree? Yes, it's really simple. You can just say thank you. <laughs> say thank you. I know. It's so funny because I, I was talking with my friends about that one day. And then the next day I said something to my friend. I, I complimented her and she said, thank you. 
she just stopped. <laughs> and I could tell that it was just killing her to not say anything else. I said, oh, good, good job. Way to go. You know, so she was yes. really proud of herself. And then finally, um, you know, letting in that love from your higher power. So, you know, God, higher power, however you think about that, feeling that divine love and that divine being of who you are. I think that's a big part of self-worth too. Yeah, so let's, absolutely. let's okay. um, focus on uh, what we can do from your perspective. And now, Tanil, let's start with your idea that everybody has a story, because I think we can all relate to this no matter how old we are. But this is something you do with the girls. And t tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, so we really want to build unity within the workshop. And so I have a segment that I call In Her Shoes. Mm -hmm. And it's where each of the girls goes around and they share just a minute to two minutes of their story and what they're dealing with and what they've gone through to see what it really would be like to live in their shoes. Mm. And we're, we're all going through something and you don't know what is going on at the person in the line at the grocery store or even really your closest friends. We all have secrets and that we don't share with people. Mm -hmm. And so when we start to recognize that, oh, I'm, you're going through that too? I'm not in this alone? Oh, you struggle with self-worth. You have a broken family. Mm. Wow, we have a lot more in common than we realize. I think it also opens up the ability to encourage that person in that. Mm -hmm. And number one, we recognize that we're not alone in it. Because I think a lot of times we feed the lie that I'm the only one going through this. And no one understands. Yeah. But really, we all struggle with something. Right. Absolutely. And then the other part of it is recognizing that I, they need encouragement. <laughs> you know, we're, if we're hurting, those girls need that encouragement. And we also do something where uh, I state something and it, anything, it could be, uh, I don't feel beautiful or I don't feel worthy on my team or in school. And then it gets deeper and deeper, just issues, brokenness in, in the family and in friends. And if it's true for you, you step into the circle mm. and for everyone to support each other, they say, true that. Oh, they I step that. out of the circle. And you see how many girls are feeling the exact same way that you're feeling. Wow. How powerful. It is. It's very emotional. Yeah, I, bet. <laughs> I bet it is. And and it's a great example also to teach girls how to to be honest and be real about what, what they're going through. Because I know women of all ages struggle with that, you know, to just yeah. say, yeah, I struggle with this and I have a problem with this or this happened. We feel embarrassed or ashamed. And, and I mean, think no matter what age we are, we try to hide those things. And I think it just perpetuates that sense of comparison that, well, nobody feels like I do and they're better than I am. And, and it's just not true. Yeah. And I think especially as a woman in our culture, there is this idea that you have to have it all. You have to be beautiful and smart and funny and athletic and artistic and juggle all of these different roles at the same time. And the expectations are unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. Okay, excellent. So how about influence? And you've talked a lot about encouraging our girls and helping them encourage one another. And I think you teach them about the power of encouragement and the power of community. And it sounds like some of these exercises you were just talking about are probably part of that. Um, but tell us a little bit, of more, bit more about how we can teach our kids, encourage them and teach them the power of community and help them to find that community when they're feeling like maybe Kennedy was feeling, you know, like they're isolated or their friends don't like them or whatever. Yeah, I think a lot of that is getting involved in things. Mm -hmm. When you open up and do activities that you love to do, you feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. And it opens up a community that you can influence. Yeah. I don't think that we recognize how powerful of an influence we are no matter what community we are in. Mm -hmm. I coach basketball and volleyball. And every year I have that conversation with our seniors that, do you remember when you were a freshman and – how much you looked up to your seniors. You're that freshman now. And they every year they forget and they don't recognize that they are those girls that everyone else is looking up to. Yeah. So we really just don't understand the influence that we have. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what hinders us from being that influence. So just breathing that truth into your daughters and 
and helping them understand that they have an influence on everyone around them, just like everyone around them has an influence on them. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. And I think it's so important to not only, I think sometimes we might, we might be good at encouraging our daughters and surely we're modeling that for them, but helping them to encourage others. That's like a whole other ball of wax there because it can be, you can't, maybe they feel embarrassed or they're not sure if they should say that nice thing or compliment somebody or whatever. But, um, you know, I always try to teach my daughters and I try to live by the same motto that if we have something nice to say, we should tell that person, you know, say it. Yes. That's definitely one of the topics that I talk about in my workshop is Mm -hmm. we get shy about saying something. I tell them a story of when I saw this girl in a store, I was shopping and I saw this girl with beautiful eyes, didn't know her. And I just wanted to go and tell her, and I was scared. Oh. Like, she's not going to be mad if I tell her, so I just went no. up and told her. Oh, you did? You did it? Yes, I did. Oh, good for you. That's awesome. I love that. I mean, seriously, who hates a compliment? Nobody exactly. is going to be offended. Oh, exactly. gosh. And as a mom, too, you are the encourager and the example. Yeah. So always, t- always encouraging them is a good example for how they can encourage others. Yeah, that's great because it teaches them the language of encouragement and how to do that, right? Shows them the way. So important. Okay, so let's talk about body image. (laughs) We haven't really gotten into that one yet, but that's a huge one for our our young girls and teenage girls. Um, That goes back to the comparing thing again, again, I think, too, um, trying to look a certain way and also to not only social media, but the media in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk a little bit about what you talk with the girls about when you're teaching about body image and health and exercise. The main thing is, is that you are not your body. Mm. So we all have unique bodies. And I think that we start to define ourselves by what we look like where, and that is just not the truth. (laughs) Another thing with body image is the expectations that are put on women. Like you said, in the media And now with social media, Mm. we are being compared to these models on Instagram that we think are are real people, which they're real people, but they're being edited and appearing as this is my normal life at the beach. And and then we're comparing ourselves to them, to these edited images. And it's just not fair for girls. It's not fair for any of us, really. No, I agree. There's actually, I didn't even know this until last summer I was with a friend and we took a selfie together because we were out for lunch and I was visiting her and she posted it and I was like, what did you do to our faces? And I didn't even know there was an app that like takes away your wrinkles or something. Yes. Yeah. And she does it on all of her posts. And I, I thought I looked weird. I was like, put my wrinkles back, you know, I don't look like myself. <laughs> but um, I just like, yeah, there are these apps that literally can like just take away your wrinkles or just change you or put a filter on and you look beautiful or brilliant or whatever or you know just shave a little off your body or whatever it can be right so it's not realistic very deceiving very deceiving and we need to be careful because the girls I think especially the young girls they don't always know that um that these are you know that these things are not real they don't realize that until we teach them yes no they don't I mean I've caught myself even not recognizing and recognizing that it's the highlights of people's lives and this is not necessarily something they've worked for but just an app that they've shaved off a little bit of their that that thigh gap that has been a common term used yeah you know the other day my eight-year-old who I would say has great self-esteem she is like very confident and very excited and exuberant and all those words and but she was standing in the mirror and she had these pants on they were like leggings or something and she's like I need to change my pants before we go to school and I said why she's like because I look fat and I was Mm -hmm. like what you did not just say that and I'm like how do you why do you think that she's like well look at my legs look at how they and I mean I seriously don't know where she got that I never say that about myself we never talk about stuff like that at home but I know that it's her friends talking about it and I know that she sees it on tv and you know it's so impossible to stop them from getting that idea in their head at such a young age. Yes, it is. It's everywhere. Mm. And that's why, honestly, I don't touch on body image that much in my workshops because I like to talk about the deeper rooted issue of the self-worth. Mm. And so when you know that you're worthy then and you know that you're loved and known, then you feel more confident about how you look and what your body is and mm. being okay in your skin exactly the size you are and the color of your hair because Mm -hmm. 
really, if you don't know that worth, then as women, we're always going to be too much or not enough. Yeah. You're either too skinny or your hair's too curly or it's too straight. It's no matter what it is. It's true. The grass is always greener. <laughs> yes. It's true. We could go back and forth on that one in our own lives forever. But you're right. Once we have that self-worth, then we can embrace how we are and who we are. And then that, again, that doesn't mean that we are never going to change anything about ourselves. We might want to change something, but you do it from a place of, I love myself and I like myself. And so I want to change this, you know, that's going to make me feel better or not not even make me feel better, but you know, it's going to make me more confident in myself and it's going to be part of, you know, who I want to be versus, shaming ourselves about our body image and you know making ourselves diet or do these kinds of things because we feel bad about ourselves you know it's very different to approach it from self-love versus like you know self-defeat or self-hate yeah from when you're coming from a perspective of self-love you're coming from a perspective of health i want to have a healthy body Mm -hmm. i want to eat healthy because it's good for my heart and my body and even your happiness. You know, you got to get those endorphins flowing from exercise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, thank you. Nice plug for exercise. <laughs> it's really, and it's true. Exercise is a great part of it, too. To And not just, not for our girls to be skinny. I think that's where a lot of them start to exercise is because they want to be skinny or they want to Mm -hmm. look like the model or the person that they saw online or whatever. But it's to be healthy and to be happy. And that's one thing I love about all the research on exercise and mental health is just how it really does improve our self-confidence. It improves our self-esteem. It gives us more coordination and skills as we do sports or as we just get involved in any kind of activity that we enjoy we feel good and, you know, we feel better about ourselves and we also can overcome things like depression and anxiety that tend to plague girls and women so much too. Yes. So when you come at it from a perspective of that, you're going to feel like you're accomplishing something rather than if you're always working toward that model body that you've seen on Instagram, you're always going to find another photo of someone that looks better than you and you're going to, that that is an endless battle. It's a cycle. (laughs) That is so true. That is so true. And that goes for all you moms out there listening too. <laughs> of course, again, we need to apply this to our own lives before we can really be the example for our kids. And one of the great things that I write about Nate Keys to Mental Health, one of the keys, in fact, key two is to exercise for self-esteem, but key three is to exercise as a family, you know, and we do model that too. Like you said with your mom, she modeled healthy behavior to you and you learned what health was by watching her. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome that you guys do that as a family because that's building community within your family, growing your family together in a healthy way. I love that. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love it too. And I think everybody should be doing it. So if you need something to do and you're not sure that you are the good example of exercise, quote unquote, just go do an, a physical activity with your children together as a family. And you'll not only have fun, you'll build closer relationships and you'll also be teaching them you know, more self-confidence and self-esteem and health. So yeah. Great yeah, idea. and really with exercising, I think a lot of people just think, oh, I have to go to the gym, but yes. you can go on a hike, you know, there's, there's a lot of different, you can go swimming, there's so things, many ideas. getting outside. I literally in my book have like a hundred and something ideas of things you can do. And, so and really it's in the chapter on families. So there's like a hundred and some different things you can do with your family that you could also do on your own. But, you know, when you do it with somebody you love or somebody you care about, just all the better, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And then going back to what you talked about before, everybody has a story that we have, um, you know, this power of encouraging one another and this sense of community. And as we compliment and are kind to one another, that we do build that community. Again, I want to reiterate for all of you listening that that goes for us too as moms. Again, we've been talking about it in terms of us teaching our daughters, but I think we can really learn and grow in these areas as well, remembering that you know, we're not the only one going through what we're going through. And that's one thing I love about these radio shows is that you do see each week that, you know, you're not the only one and that other people are like you and there are, you know, there's a lot to learn and grow together and and that we can um, build each other up instead of tearing each other down. And I think um, all of us can work on that, right? Yes, it, it is a battle. We have to be warriors fighting for worth. <laughs> I love that. We are warriors fighting for worth. (laughs) It is a battle and it doesn't just, it's not something that you can just sort of do once. You know, it's a lifelong battle, really, especially when we're trying to keep it up and model. And I think as we go through different phases in our lives, that can change. You know, I was just reading a book about 
um, a, a woman who had a you know really great self esteem self worth I guess and she applied to graduate program that she really wanted to get into and was denied and that just completely cut her down and she became depressed and she was just completely she took it so personally like she was a failure because she didn't get into this program when um, you know it really it was just kind of one of those transitions of life that can kind of knock you for a loop. Mm-hmm. And we can teach our daughters that too, that you know what, it's going to, you're going to feel differently about yourself as you grow older, as you go away to college, as you become a mom or, you know, whatever you're going to do in your life, that that can grow and change, but that's normal and it's okay. And, you know, we just need to keep working on it. Yeah. And not basing your worth off of your circumstances. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a biggie. <laughs> so do you teach, how do you teach that to girls or how, do you just talk, how do you talk to them about that? As far as their circumstances and going through different phases? Yeah, yeah. I talk a lot about, so we're put in different circumstances throughout our life that we don't even have a choice, yeah, right? Yeah. And then there's also choices that we can make. And so recognizing that you are not your circumstances, but working toward making that next right choice, mm-hmm. I think that once we get caught up in that depressed state of I am stuck here, yeah. we don't really want to make the right choice. We mm-hmm. we have a cycle of, of wrong choices and that affects everything else. And so I think that making that next right choice is what really having the strength, recognizing that you do have the strength to make that choice. Ooh, okay. I like that too. So we can help, we can recognize ourselves and then we can help our daughters and the girls in our life to recognize that they and we have the strength to make the changes we need to make. Yes. Yes, I love that. Changing oh, your service. mindset can change a lot. Our mind is very powerful. That Even is Even daily true. writing down 10 things that you're grateful for. Yeah. It starts changing how you view your life and what you're doing instead of dwelling on the negative circumstances that you're put in because yeah, life can be really hard. Yeah. And so when you instead of dwelling on those difficulties, focusing on the positives. Yeah changes your outlook. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought up gratitude because I think I'm, I'm with you. I, I echo that. That is a wonderful tool for all of us to build our self-worth, to look around and see what we're grateful for. Just um, last weekend, my daughter and I heard a talk and <clears throat> the, ta- the speaker was talking about how we need to be grateful for what we have instead of looking for what we don't have. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to it, actually. We were driving home from a trip, and I was listening, but I didn't realize she was listening in the back. But I kind of hoped that she was because it was talking about, you know, if you don't, if you only have one friend, be grateful you have one friend, and don't be wishing you had 20 more. And she, that night, as I went down to say prayers with her and put her to bed, um, she said, you know what? I really liked what that what he said, and um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do that. I'm going to focus on being grateful for the one friend that I have or the two friends that I have. And not just think about all the people that aren't my friends, but really just focus on what I have. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad you're doing that. And write about it in your journal so that you can get it on paper because that helps to kind of make it more real too. Yes, that's so special. Yeah, so that's a great tool. So uh, one more thing I want to talk about before we wrap up. One other um, thing that you teach the girls is that, that idea that we were talking about earlier of the labels and the lies versus the truth. So... We, as we talked about, we also model this as moms as well. We need to be the example of not believing the lies of our culture. Um, How do you teach the girls that when you're working with them? Well, I mentioned the activity that I do with the labels and the lies, but I think that for everyone, moms, daughters, we need to first recognize them as lies. Yeah. We start to believe them as truth. And so that's really where the, that's the battle in yeah. itself is recognizing, oh, that's not true about myself. When you've been told something continually over and over again, especially in your families, mm-hmm. you can believe that is true about yourself. And so we first have to recognize, oh, this is not who I am. This is not the truth about me. And mm-hmm. then start replacing that with who you really are, that you really are loved, you really are known, and you really are worthy. Oh, that's so beautiful. You say that so well. And I, I completely agree with that, that it's up to us, too, to help help our daughters and help ourselves to see the lies and to find the truth. And I want to put out there for everybody listening that one of the great tools that I found to help with that is to learn for yourself and teach your children um, some of the cognitive therapy tools. And one of my favorites is using a thought record 
to start to hear your thoughts and to write them down and see what you're telling yourself all the time and to see how you're feeling along with it. So, you know, you can write down what you're thinking and what you're feeling. And then you can go back later when you're not so worked up and go and find the truth. And I love doing this with clients. I love doing it with myself. And I've loved doing it with my children to help them kind of work through problems and learn how to have that skill that we all need to develop of hearing our thoughts and stopping them and challenging them and changing them when they're just not helping us and they're not healthy. Yes. I had, uh, just yesterday I did a workshop where I had the girls draw a mirror and write down everything that they think when they look in the mirror, whether it's positive or negative, and then seeing how it's so much easier for them to write negative things in the mirror. Yeah. And yeah. it's good. It brings up your uh, pyramid of self where you talked about self-awareness. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the first key is figuring out what do I think of myself? Where am I at exactly on this journey of mm -hmm. self-worth? And so once you have that, then we made post-it notes with something, one thing, just find one thing that you like about yourself and put it on that post-it note and we have it hang we have them hanging those on their real mirrors in their bathroom somewhere cool. that they look every day so they can read that mm -hmm. and when you put those words of encouragement to yourself something that you have spoke that truth that you have spoke over yourself hanging it in areas that you see every day when you read those daily your mind recognizes that mm -hmm. and then you start to believe those as truth Yes. And that's a wonderful tool that we can all use as well. So everybody listening, you can try that with your daughters. I mean, what a great idea. Draw a mirror, write in there everything that you see, and then find one truth that's positive and hang it on your mirror. We can do that for ourselves as well, I think. Yes. Definitely. Sometimes we need that encouragement too right there to remind and us. It encourages everyone else who goes in those rooms as well. That's I remember true. growing up, my sister had encouraging notes all over our bathroom. Oh. And I was like, what are these? And then I start <laughs> reading and I'm like, this is great. Oh. This is really I start really believing them for myself too. I love it. I love it. So we could do it all as a family, put them all over the house, and then everybody can benefit, right? Yes. That's such a great idea. And all of this topic is just so important. And there's so many things we could do to help our daughters and the girls in our lives to develop self-worth. And there's so much we can do in our own lives to develop that self-worth. And um, I guess, you know, I wish we had more time to keep going. I'm sure we'll have to have you back again because you just do such great work. But yeah. if there was one final thing that you would want the moms who are listening to know about girls and self-esteem, what would you want to share? I think the main thing is just as a mom, you are their encourager and you are their example and you don't you don't even know what's going on in in your own daughter's life to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. And what's what she's thinking, her thoughts that she doesn't share with anyone. And so just constantly be fighting that battle for her and encouraging her and building her up and teaching her by example and fighting your own battle and recognizing that it's okay to be battling that and she learns from that. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, the main thing. Yeah, I love that. You're building self-worth in the moms even as you speak those words, I think. So yeah, be kind to yourselves, moms, right? And yes. uh, recognize your own worth and then share it with everybody else and your daughters will pick it up, right? Yes, believe that you are known, loved, and worthy. Believe that you are known, loved, and worthy. That's a wonderful way to wrap up. <laughs> Tenille Shanae, thank you so much for being my guest today on the show. It's been such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much for having me. I've loved this. And I hope everybody, I hope you'll all go to, now, do you mind if I ask how old are you? I'm 24. 24! Can you believe it? <laughs> 24, and she's got all this wisdom already. I mean, I think most of us wished we could have known what you know at 24. <laughs> that would make us a lot happier as people and moms, I'm sure. <laughs> But I'm just really impressed. And um, everybody listening, can you believe all this wisdom that Tanil shared with us? We really appreciate it. And I hope you'll go check out her website and her programs um, on her website at Tanil. So it's T-E-N-I-E-L-L-E, Shanae, S-H-E-N-A-E dot com. Right? Yes. I also have an Instagram where you That's can be right. encouraged. And that is at true dot reflections. Yes. 
And I just started following Tennille as well. And her posts are fabulous. So definitely find her on her website and on Instagram at true.reflections. And um, share it with your daughters. Share what you find with your daughters, right? Get them hooked up with her Instagram account. They need all the positive influence they can get, right? Exactly. All right. Social media for positive. (laughs) Social media for positive. That's right. That's what we're trying to do here. Um, Anyway, I thank you all for joining us here today. And again, if you need any advice on that, how to do a thought record or how to change your thinking, I have a couple of videos on my website. Um, If you type in um, thought management part one and part two, you'll find those. Or you could look on my YouTube channel for just thought management records or thought records, how to do a thought record. You can find those. And um, also on my website, you can find links to all the kinds of things we talked about today. And I hope that you will keep coming back here each week to grow with us through motherhood instead of just going through it because it's a whole lot better to grow through it. And it's a whole lot more fun to do it together as we do each week here on motherhood. Bye-bye, everybody.